First of all, how about a distracted driving? I don't think there's anything worse on the road, more dangerous right now. So with us is Karen Russell of the Mountain Valley Regional Rehab Hospital in Prescott Valley. Oh, nice great, job. Great, great place. <laughs> <laughs> so distracted driving, what does that look like? Well, distracted driving is anything that occupies or distracts your vision, occupies your hands other than the safety of, of maintaining the vehicle, control of the vehicle, and cognition. So any of those three things that um, impair those is considered a distracted driving yeah. task. Yeah, so even if you're driving along and you're, you're looking around and everything, but you're talking to somebody even hands-free, that's mm -hmm. your cognition. Your cognition, Going to yes. be a little, and, and texting yes. and driving, uh, must I ask, why is that so dangerous? <laughs> well, I mean, for many reasons, but texting and driving then impairs all three of those. So where you have other tasks, where you're adjusting the radio or your GPS or you're talking to someone, it's maybe one of those tasks, but texting and driving takes away your vision it involves cognition and then also you have something in your hand so you don't have complete control of the vehicle. I mean, I, I just can't imagine people texting, driving. I, I just can't. It, it just, it, so when you're doing that, what happens when you take your eyes off the road, Karen? Well, when you take your eyes off the road, it's um, the equivalent. If you're driving 55 miles an hour, that's the equivalent of driving the length of a football field blindfolded. So if you went up to someone and said, hey, would you drive blindfolded? They'd probably look at you like you're crazy. But that's really what texting and driving is doing because you are completely taking your eyes off the road and it is really the equivalent of driving, you know, blindfolded. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I had a friend who literally, this is before the texting and stuff came along anyway, but she looked down to adjust the radio literally for a second or two and looked back up and she had, she ran into a parked car. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't take long. No, and, it's and seconds. Yeah. Really. Um, the, the, the statistics are just, I was amazed um, at some of the things that are out there. 11 teens die every day. Every day? Every day from texting and driving. Um, you are six times more likely to get in an accident texting and driving versus drunk driving. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's amazing. Well, and yeah. not to even mention the other people that are killed by people who are distracted driving, you know, distracting, yeah. texting, yeah. calling, eating, you know, whatever. Yeah, there's 3,500 deaths a year from just distracted driving. Oh my and that's gosh. not counting all the, the injuries that are life altering. So, and yeah. And that happens a lot. So whether you're being the distracting person, you know, <laughs> causing right. the accident right. or in the accident, what kinds of of injuries do you see at the rehab hospital? Yeah, yes. and it seems like the motor vehicle accidents um, that we are seeing, those patients, it seems to be alarmingly increasing. Um, so we see anything from traumatic hand injuries to spinal cord injuries to multiple fractures. Um, recently, the worst thing is we are seeing more that have all three. So if you have a head injury and you have a spinal cord injury and you have multiple fractures, fractures can actually be um, is difficult to rehab from, especially if you get multiple limbs and you end up being in a non-weight bearing situation. So if you have three out of your four limbs that you're not allowed to stand on, push from, or use, and you're, you're trying, pretty helpless. you are, you're gonna be dependent for all care, all mobility, all self-care, grooming, bathing, everything until those fractures heal, which could be six to 12 weeks. Whoa, so uh, how do you, what do people go through when they do rehab then from these, these car accidents? I mean, you're in a speeding bullet and you just got smashed up. Yeah, once they're medically stable and they are ready to come for acute rehab, um, that's what's really important is getting involved in the rehab process. If you're a brain injury, um, you really want to get all three disciplines, occupational, speech therapy, um, physical therapy. Speech therapy can be really important because people with brain injuries tend to have a lot of cognitive issues, so they really need that speech therapist. They deal more than with swallowing and speech. They deal with a lot with cognition. So How they to make your brain talk, you know, right, talk to your vocal right. cord and, things. Right, and the, the head injury will alter how people um, think. It, it affects, it can affect um, logic, it can affect uh, executive higher level functions like how you would do math, um, you know, just all of those daily activities that we take for granted. Someone with a brain injury can't process and think through, how do I balance my checkbook? How do I write out a check? 
The, um, the simplest things the you kind of have to relearn. You have that. to relearn. Yes. Now you can relearn with with the you know debilitation that you have. But does the brain regenerate? Does does it get better uh, through therapy and stuff? It or? depends on the extent of the injury. Um, what you're looking at is retraining other parts of the brain generally that have not been injured. Um, so you're trying to get those, um, yeah, those healthy parts of the brain to, to learn over. to take over and do those In particular case tasks. The other part yes. of the brain does not. Right. So right. how do older adults on the road? How do they stay safe? Yeah, it's you know it's hard. You really want to drive obviously defensively. You want to really keep your eye out for everything on the road. Um, older adults, I really stress, and they don't really think about the importance of strength and flexibility, especially in your ankle muscles. When you look at the strength and flexibility it takes to move your foot from the gas pedal to the brake, the motion in your ankle, and the ankle muscles generally when I'm out in the community are the, the muscles that I see that tend to get weaker in older adults. Um, get regular eye checkups um, because eye degeneration happens slowly as we age, and I don't think we're really, it's not as apparent, you know, so we don't realize the decline in our What's eyes. Going? I think that's true with yeah. hearing and, and yeah. everything too. Yeah. Well, and driving the slow lane, <laughs> because older people go slower. <laughs> They're like and in the fast lane and people are like, I gotta run over you. It, anyway, yeah, it, it is important to kind of get over to the yeah, other side of the, the road. Other side where yeah. you can go slower and not be pressured. But anyway, exactly. Karen exactly. Russell, thank you so much from uh, Mountain Valley Rehabil Regional Rehabilitation Hospital in the Prescott Valley. Great organization, helps out a lot if something bad happens. Exactly. To you. Yes, we don't want it to, but no. we're there if you need it. You'll fix it. Thank you, Karen.